Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. Today, Brandon Johnson and Brian Mitchell will be sharing their experiences with the new iPhone 7. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO11. So, I know I have bought an iPhone 7. Who else here has bought an iPhone 7? I also have an iPhone 7. Wonderful. I do not have an iPhone 7. Well, that's, that's two-thirds okay. of us. That's that's something, at least. 66%. Hey. Oh, yeah. So, I, over the, the first weekend that I had the iPhone 7, so I, I got it on Friday, I believe around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, mm-hmm. and over that weekend, and I posted a blog post by Monday at around noon. So, I, over that weekend, had written up some thoughts and um, feature descriptions and whatnot for the new iPhone. And so now we can kind of discuss that and um, inform the world, I suppose. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I guess uh, one of the biggest things uh, that kind of informed me getting my iPhone 7 was that my uh, I was really unhappy with my 5S because uh, <laughs> it was so, so, so uh, old, um, which is such a goofy, like, psychological and uh, sociological concept to, di- to discuss, but that's a totally different episode of a totally different podcast. Um but nonetheless, like one of the coolest things about it is just like such uh, what a quantum leap it is in specs uh, from even the phones of two, three years ago. Yeah, uh, and that that kind of starts with the processor. Um, so this uses it's the first uh, phone in Apple's line, as I understand it, to use uh, that kind of uh, AM uh, ARM big dot little big dot little or vice versa, uh, depending on the how the caps lock looks and depending on who's reporting on it, you pronounce it different ways, I guess. Yeah. Um, but the, their, uh, Apple's calling it their A10 Fusion system on a chip. It is pretty darn unbelievable. Uh, and uh, actually, Brian, you used the word incredible here, uh, and I will co opt that as my own. Um, but I did cite my sources because I just mentioned it to you. Uh, as, as a result, like I've seen um, that my phone now outperforms my iPad by about 2 to 1, it feels like, uh, in like even basic stuff like just loading apps, right? We're not even talking web browsing here. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, like what the, the first test I did when I, uh, unboxed my iPhone seven one week ago today, almost to the minute, um, was, uh, launching Snapchat, uh, because I'm a trashy millennial who's all about them snaps. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would say Snapchat performance is definitely improved. <laughs> massively improved. Like my, my five S took, uh, probably about 45 seconds to load the camera. Oh and really? My seven. Yeah. My seven did Jeez. it instantly. Instantly. Wow. So I, my my six did load Snapchat. It would it would lag a lot and take a few seconds. My seven still does lag a bit though. I I don't like that it opens to the the camera on. I think that's just a horrible waste of battery. And generally, yeah. when I'm on my iPhone six with under forty percent of battery and I open Snapchat, it will instantly die because it requires so much power to just open Snapchat. Right. So you yes. before my seven, I was more reliable on Snapchat if it was earlier in the day. Ah. Uh-huh. So. Just due to the battery. So uh, I, I linked in my blog post, I kind of, um, by the way, you can, you can follow along with this. If you go to brianm.me slash posts slash iPhone dash seven, there's also a link in the show notes. And I kind of had a pre-delivery anticipation. So this was differences in the iPhone seven. So new, more hardware features that were compared to the iPhone six. That's what I was coming from. So the, the first one is definitely the A10 Fusion. And I linked a post by uh, John Gruber on Daring Fireball comparing some of the benchmarks. And so the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus get on, on Geekbench 4, which is a, a notable um, benchmarker, gets a single score rating of 3,450 and multi-core of 5,630. Um, so now compare this to the top Android phone at, at the time or still presently. I think, I'm not sure what, if it's changed. It's close enough. Android moves fast. Uh, Samsung Ga- Galaxy S7 got a single core of 1806, so it's compared to 3450, and a multi-core of 5213 versus the iPhone 7's 5630. Yep. So I think multi-core, it's a little closer, but that makes sense because a lot of these Samsung phones have eight cores. Four of them are low power, four are high. Yep. I so believe. It's, it's big, little, but just in more. Yep. Versus the the iPhones, four too high, too low power. So, but or. But the A10 Fusion has a much higher clock speed and better single core, so mm-hmm. two better single core CPUs are going to be 
Yeah, this um, this benchmarking is quite impressive. Um, you know, to to go along with that, though, of course, Gruber does say down here that somebody did test the iPhone Seven, and it beats their sixty five hundred dollar twelve core Mac Pro, which you know is cool and all, but I have to say that's sort of suspicious. I I did look up the specs of many machines on Geekbench, and while the iPhone Seven did beat some of the lower end ones, it didn't not definitely did not beat all of them mm-hmm. especially in multi-core the mac pro is just trumps you know from the 20 20 thousands 30 thousands so it's right. it's much much better performance so i guess i guess the question is would it beat like for, for example an overclocked 6700k because it would not no right so, not multi-thread yeah. at least Be- single thread i think even as Be- well the 6700 because is pretty four, good. four gigahertz is much higher than it's what 2.65 yeah definitely clock yeah. speed so I, I feel like a, a regular person would never have a, a $6,500 uh, 12-core Mac Pro, but... And that's a Xeon processor. You know, it's, exactly. it's meant for multi-thread and not right. for single. Exactly. So, so. It's, yep. it's cool stat, but it's kind of artificial. And now, I also saw he... With that said, everybody should be using the war game for this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is true. This is true. In fact, I was just checking the. Um, I, it's 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 kind of funny you guys mentioned that. I was just checking the stats for the uh, recent rebuild of my desktop I did, and my iPhone Seven's multi-core Geekbench score beats out my uh, desktop's uh, single-core Geekbench score. But the multi-core Geek, Geekbench score is something like an order of magnitude faster. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which which is just like par for the course. However, I did also run the um, JavaScript version of the War Game benchmark. Don't even bother. <laughs> and um, yeah, you know they were pretty much equivalent. Wait, where did you find that? Like that should be gone. No, I I I saved it. You saved you need to now. unsave that promptly. Nah. <laughs> yeah, so I think this the, the the performance of this phone is just unbelievable. Uh, it, it is amazing that it's four cores. I'm really glad they went with the the big little architecture because it's just genius. Yeah. But I guess my question just just ends here with why did they call that Fusion? Because isn't there a regular A10? Isn't that what's in the big guy? There's no A10. No. It's the A9X was the most recent oh, right. one. That was the the fast ones in the iPad Pros. Right. Then A10. I think Fusion just to to further tell people that yeah, it's it's more than just the next one. It's it's fusion. So so what happens in what slow. happens next year? So is it the A11 or is it the A11 Fusion or is it the A11X or is it the I A10X? Think, you don't think marketing will deal with that later? I'm just <laughs> No, I think I think you're absolutely right, Ryan. I think the next one's going to be called the A11 Fusion. Okay. Yes. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I could be wrong. No, I think you're right. Be the um, A11 Fusion. And that explains why it turned from one camera into two. Exactly. And then the, the next year will be the A12 Cold Fusion. Oh. Oh, man. Too real. Too real. I think that's trademarked by Adobe yet. But, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry. Everybody will try to forget. Everybody will try to forget. This so, is true. So let's talk about uh, more specs here. Two, gig- two gigabytes of memory? Mm-hmm. Is that good? Now, mm-hmm. the the 7 Plus has three. Ooh. Just just to note. I, my focus is post on the 7 because that my was the model I was getting. six. Well, we don't run a JVM, so... Mm. True, <laughs> I see what you did there. True story. Ah, 3D Touch. So that, that was, 3D Touch was, of course, new last year in the 6S and 6S Plus, but it's new to the 7s and new to me. Well, sorry, not new to the 7s. New to me yes. and Brandon. This so is true. I love 3D Touch. I think it is quite fun to use, and I, I've enjoyed it a lot. Right. My... Ex- like my very favorite thing uh, about using Tweetbot and using a bunch of online banking apps, well, not a bunch, but you know, a reasonable amount of online banking apps, is that so many of these things, even like Uber and Google Maps, have such really helpful um, uh, 3D touch shortcuts. Um, and actually starting, uh, because I had the Apple Watch uh, paired up with that 5S, it was always kind of a little bit weird to be using 3D touch on a watch and not, uh, not on, on the phone. Um, I actually found myself trying to do 3D touch on the phone a couple times, and uh, of course it would do nothing because I had a 5S. But with the 7, um, that really feels like that continuity uh, is that continuity trademark is there, um, and uh, the, the result is some kind of pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Like for example, I was just uh, checking out the Activity app a little bit ago, and it turns out like uh, the Activity app uh, 
uh, has a little widget in iOS 10 that will give you the same sort of deal that your watch will give you, um, that the, the three rings and such. Uh, you can also go to directly to sharing workouts and history from there. Online banking apps will do stuff like allow you to transfer money, deposit a check, pay, pay a bill, or contact the bank. Um, some of them some banking are not, apps. Like, advance. Yeah, right? A, a couple of them do, a couple of them don't in this case. Uh, Square Cash will let you pay people who you've recently paid um, and also show you your balance of Square Cash. So that's, you know, that, that sort of thing is kind of cool. Um, and it's definitely one of my f favorite new features along with the uh, Taptic home button uh, on, on the 7 right there. Yeah, the, the Taptic engine is one of my most favorite things about this. Uh, it's, it's kind of combined with 3D Touch and the, the home button which is now a solid state, which I always also discuss. So I, I really do like the new, the new home button. I think it, it, you know, it doesn't feel like a, a button, but it, its response is, is immediate. And yeah. it's, it's kind of, it's, it's easier to press. You don't have to press quite as hard, mm -hmm. but it's, it's still a very a good feedback, I guess. So I don't know, the experience feels lighter and easier, I'd say. Absolutely, absolutely agreed. Um, I, I never really had a problem with the home button ceasing to function. Uh, like I know some folks, I know ATP a couple of weeks ago did uh, spend a significant portion of their time discussing how that's that's kind of a, a major fear that causes some people to activate assistive touch mode. Yeah. Uh, yeah so and and uh, I'll, I'll put a link to that uh, in the show notes here. But the um, it, it just really feels super great to be able to not have to worry about about that button at all, even though I wasn't really worried about it before. It just feels so solid, and uh, that kind of solid state, as, as, as you put it, um, button there really kind of helps the stability of the phone, I feel. I'm less likely to kind of push the phone to flip over almost, <laughs> right, when mm -hmm. I push the home button. Um, it's, it's just a, a really, really uh, neat improvement that kind of parallelizes things with the watch a little bit more, um, I, I know in our uh, in second opinion number ten where we discussed iOS ten, uh, quick quick shout out slash shameless plug, <laughs> uh, we discussed uh, how uh, some other aspects of like system notifications are also kind of have that haptic feedback, um, and that kind of parallelism between the phone and the watch is really just like spot on. Another thing I noticed too with iOS ten, I guess I should have noticed uh, noted this when we discussed iOS ten, but I'll add it here because it's been particularly pronounced with the iPhone 7, uh, is that like uh, notification, like duplication, right? I'm not, I'm not as likely to get notified on Slack on my phone, my watch, and my, uh, and my Mac, or on my, on my, um, yeah, on my Mac at, the, at that same time. If it, that, that said, if I am using my Windows computer uh, or the Linux side of things, uh, I'll definitely still get the notification once on Linux and once on the Apple side of things, but that they seem to have improved that uh, a little bit too, so... Even then, um, the, that when the type of feedback is parallelized and it's, those notifications are kind of deduplicated, there, it's pretty. Uh, the results are pretty darn staggering. It's pretty great. I haven't noticed that too much. I mean, I, I see it between my my watch and my phone because they more or less share the same notification. So you know, my yeah. watch might buzz, but my phone doesn't. So I can see my watch and then go to my phone without having my phone also. But not. I haven't seen that between my Mac or other devices so much. For sure. For sure. Well, another thing about uh, the new 7 is uh, the camera. I believe it still uses a Sony sensor, which is always uh, great for a Sony fan like me, who happens to be wearing Sony headphones uh, and uh, has uh, a Sony speaker hanging out here uh, right next to his Sony DSLR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, o the only brand I evangelize more than Apple. Uh, more the, than uh, Apple? Well, no, no, no. I, it's the second second one that I evangelize closest to Apple. Okay, I was I was worried there for a second. Yeah, right, right, right. Have to have to keep my, uh, you know, how could I say this on the fifth anniversary of Steve Jobs' death? How dare I? Wow, um, yeah, you're right. I know, right, right. Mm -hmm. um, Timely. I almost wore my my Apple Steve Job in the bite shirt today. There he is, you know? right over there on the book there he is. shelf. Yes, and on the, the Time magazine on the on the other shelf. Yeah, and uh, let's see, uh, right here also. <laughs> just, just, we are set. Yeah, this is true. At least this four Steves true. in every room. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Um, so in in the camera, there's uh, you know there's the larger aperture of one point of an f stop of one point eight, um, 
it has the 12 megapixel sensor, which is the same as the 6S, but new to Brandon and I, coming from the 5S and the 6. Yes, indeed. And there's a new image processing unit, which helps the camera take photos faster and using less energy. And I think, you know, HDR, HDR performance is much improved as well. I still remember yep. the days on my iPhone 4 taking HDR and waiting a couple of seconds yep. between photos, but it was so worth it. So, you know, yes, looking indeed. back, those photos may not, maybe weren't the best, really. But it was good at the time. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. It was totally worth using then. Yeah. And the, there's also a, a uh, what do they call it? A quad, quad color true tone flash, something yep. like that. Something like that. And you can also dim quad the flash. LED. You can also dim the flash when it uses the flashlight. I yeah, guess. you um, 3D, 3D touch on the flashlight action on the control center. Yeah, like all, all of these aspects of the camera just indicate how much of a, a quantum leap forward it is compared to certainly the 5S, uh, but even in some cases the 6. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's really, really quite staggering. The other thing, uh, again, for a goofy millennial like yours truly is that the uh, FaceTime HD camera, that's the front-facing camera there, uh, was upgraded from 1.2 megapixels to uh, 7 megapixels, and it can now shoot 1080p video, which is to say that uh, the FaceTime front-facing camera now uh, is essentially, I believe, equivalent to the rear-facing camera on, or the main camera, one might say, on the 5S. Uh, I'll look up the stats to, to the, bear the that The 5S out. has an 8 megapixel, so it's uh, that's, slightly that's smaller, true. but, and I don't think the FaceTime can do slow-mo, but it is pretty pretty comparable otherwise. I think... Right. It'll it'll help with all those selfies that you see because I know a lot have you know the 1.2 megapixel that's just 720p video basically, so I yeah, think exactly. it'll it'll really improve that and that was something I've been really not appreciating in the iPhones of of late as selfies have become more and more prevalent. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, gotta gotta prepare those Snapchats um, with all those hot takes. There we go. The, that's all the millennial lingo for this episode. No mm, more. I doubt it. <laughs> so that's about, true i am involved what about the uh 4k video have you either of you used any of that i no. i you know i went to the settings and i made sure it was at 1080p at 60 frames per second because that's what my previous one was at and so um i i use one second every day app and so i've been mm. most of my videos have been at, at 1080 at 60 frames per second so i didn't want to jump too much and use less space in 4k however if i'm ever intending on really wanting some video i'll likely use 4k Mm -hmm. but i I will hope that i remember to do that right so i i haven't but maybe maybe i will this weekend when i am in boston Mm -hmm. we'll see you know just just a few times you know just to give it a try yeah i should do a couple time lapses or a travel vlog Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's another millennial term right vlog yes no a travel uh no yeah that's true vlog is more of a gen x thing uh yeah. Yeah. You could do a flat lay. You could do a flat lay of all your uh I don't know, boarding passes. But that has information of mine on there that I don't necessarily want on the internet that accessible. That's true. That's true. Well you could cut out all the just the parts that say the airports. True. There you go. Yeah. You could do a flat lay of those. <laughs> yep. So in addition to the the high resolution camera, the larger aperture which really helps with low light performance and energy and speed with the camera there's also support for the P- display p3 color space so a wider color gamut so this allows every pixel to instead of using eight bits for its color so um you know zero to 255 for each color it'll go up to 10 bits so i don't actually know the num- numbers for that but it's more so your colors can be more vivid mm-hmm. and you can display a wider range of them so i when i post here under the display which so the display as well supports this wider color space and the FaceTime HD camera. Nice. So Absolutely. I, I have my iPhone 6 on my on this post here on my left and my iPhone 7 on the right, and I'm taking a photo with my iPhone 5. So uh, Night Shift is disabled on both, and you can see slightly different, different colors in the display, and you can see a little faint WebKit icon in a little darker red on this red background. So I'm not quite sure how to describe the fact that the iPhone 5 can pick it up, but I think it's just the fact that the iPhone 5 kind of normalizes whatever it's seeing into into it. But the fact that the 6 doesn't have anything and the 7 does pretty clearly illustrates the capabilities of, of this. I don't know if I've really noticed things that much more vivid necessarily. I haven't used my camera that much really. 
Mm-hmm. I'm I'm looking forward though this weekend as I'm traveling. Hopefully I'll take some photos. Though I'll probably use a nicer camera as well. So between the two, I'm hoping to really use this display. Now the yeah, dis- right the display is also brighter. I think it was rated for up to 625 nits, something like that. However, yep. there's a write up on DisplayMate. They really reviewed this display. They said that they could achieve a brightness of 705 when the brightness was all the way up and auto brightness was enabled. And they had also said that the reflectivity is at 4.4%, which is the lowest for a smartphone, but still more than the 1.7% reflectivity found in the 9.7-inch iPad Pro. And they also said that the color color accuracy is the most accurate of any display that they have ever measured. That's out of any phone, monitor, or TV. That's it is, awesome. Quote, visually indistinguishable from perfect. So this <sighs> this is the thing that they are talking about when they show that um, test with the little WebKit logo in the middle. Yeah. Um. It's it's in that era. I don't. Okay. I mean, that's my photo, and that the the thing you're thinking of is on the WebKit blog, and that's how to use uh, wider color gamut images mm. on the web. This is a separate thing. I have. I okay. do have a link. The the word write up is the link to it. And that can be found at displaymate.com slash iPhone 7 underscore shootout underscore one dot htm. But I recommend a link in my blog. That's probably easier. So that covers the, the speed, the display, the camera, the home button, 3D touch. So the Taptic Engine. So we, we discussed this a little bit in the iOS 10 review. But System Haptics is a new feature just to the iPhone 7. So the Taptic Engine in this iPhone is also called Taptic Engine, similar to the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. However... It is higher quality or more efficient. Some Something in there makes it usable for system haptics where the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus could not be used for that. Did you did you notice this right away, Brandon, when you set up your iPhone? Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely noticed it um, when uh, each, actually moving between each of the pages in that like introductory screen where it says hello in a bunch of different languages mm-hmm. uh, and then ask you to activate um, the, the kind of... Uh, haptic feedback you get from there is immediately, immediately much more pronounced uh, than on the 5. I actually, uh, when I when I unboxed it, I was kind of uh, taken aback by it and set up my 5S next to it to see if I could get the 5S to do the same sort of, um, a similar sort of thing, and it doesn't look like uh, that's the case. And it, it turns out, uh, as I found out later, that that's because uh, this iOS 10 feature is really only enabled on the 7. Um, simultaneously, right, like the the most kind of uh, interesting thing is like between moving uh, moving from each of those introductory screens and even other cases too. Um, I, I'm usually a person who doesn't have the uh, button and keyboard uh, sounds on, like the click. Mm-hmm. Um, that and that dates back to like 2005 uh, with like the iPad click or iPhone click wheel, mm, iPhone yeah. click wheel, iPod click wheel. There we go. I got my there we go. There we go. And uh, just like having having that kind of back in place is is really neat and really kind of like satisfying on the seven in a way that I think um, previous iPhones maybe it would not necessarily be because that's more of like a traditional phone buzzer. Um, yeah, but this is this is definitely more more similar I would say to uh, to the Apple Watch than to like the sort of kind of buzzer you used to in a phone. I guess another place where I've noticed it to be really uh, kind of pronounced is when uh, checking for new email, right? Uh, so every time I pull a, uh, pull a refresh, I, yeah, I no longer really need to do that. Um, because like the polling is set such that, uh, when I have new emails, it'll actually just kind of do a quick ping. Uh, the, the, the phone will, will do a quick ping, uh, and it'll catch me that way. Cause the poll, the polling time is set appropriately. Uh, and actually I think every account I have uses Gmail. So technically it could just do push notifications there. Couldn't it? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I, either which, those those are kind of been the main uh, uh, axes along which I noticed the um, the system haptics at that point. Yeah, I, I noticed it when, I guess, using using my phone at first. I'm like, wait, something's not quite right. I noticed it mostly, I think it was, I was in TweetBot, and there was a, a full screen image that I was uh, pinching to Zoom or something, and there was a little bit of a pulse there. I'm like, wait a minute, that is new. That is not normal. And so then yep. I, I looked online, and it looked like it was new to the iPhone 7, and people on Twitter were also saying, whoa, this is interesting. I saw a guy from the UIKit team at Apple tweet saying, have fun with, with date pickers and pull to refresh, because they have a little bit of feedback in there as well. 
You it's, betcha. It's, it's all over the operating system. We discussed in the iOS 10 review a little bit, but, you know, opening notification and control center, rearranging items in a table view, pulling to refresh, pitching to zoom on images, um, scrolling a picker wheel or date picker, um, as well as like a, just a UI toggle, um, 3D touching. It, it really, it's, it's all over the place and developers can use it now in their applications. So I'm hoping right. that more and more will pick it up and I'm excited. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm definitely in the same boat with you there. Um, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me there. Uh, Tweetbot is another one that I, I forgot about when we were discussing this, but you're absolutely right. That's another one where it's very pronounced and very kind of um, subtle yet pronounced, I guess I'd say, because it's it's almost like a welcome a welcome thing, certainly for users of the Apple Watch, I'd say, because uh, that, that parallelism is really kind of, uh, really kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Right on. So I guess next up uh, is the whole headphone jack thing. Uh, this has been kind of much reported ever since I think Christina Warren was uh, the first or among the first to break the story uh, back when she was at Mashable in January that the uh, subsequent iPhone, the iPhone, what we now know is the iPhone 7, would omit the headphone jack. Uh, uh, we now know uh, that's kind of uh, for the sake of being more waterproof and providing a perhaps slightly thinner but probably not actually that much thinner uh, phone case. Uh Really, really, that waterproofness is is kind of the cool, uh, the the major gain there, in my estimation, at least. Uh, simultaneously, too, it's really nice for folks who already have Bluetooth headphones. Um, and uh, one of the things that I kind of found interesting is uh, I never actually once tried to set up, um, to tried to plug in like wired headphones to my phone. I never, I never like thought, oh, hmm. I really wish I had a headphone jack here. I, I never even like took corded headphones and tried to plug them into my phone um, because they're just like not around anymore, which maybe means that I'm like, um, you know, nouveau millennial trash as, as as we all know me to be. Uh, there I go again, right? There you go um, again. But non- nonetheless, like I don't know, Brian. I'm I'm really interested to hear. Did you ever have you ever run into a situation where where you either only had access to corded headphones or uh, for for another reason, we're kind of like, you know, I really wish that there was that this headphone jack were back. So while I I live at home with my parents' house still, and I use their car and all their stuff, so I generally have what I need with me. Um, the only place really that I need my adapter is in the car when I'm driving. There's an aux port ah, in the yeah. car that I need to plug in, so I have my adapter for there. But that's the only place. When I did get my iPhone, I was stress testing the the Lightning ear ear pods and the Lightning to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack adapter. And so I was testing that with my Sennheiser, or no, not my Audio-Technica headphones. And so, you know, it worked on, on all devices. Um, I have seen that it worked works on any device that has iOS 10. So that that's good. However, the iPod Nano does not work with it because it cannot run iOS 10 and it doesn't know what the accessory is. So don't try that. Otherwise... Uh, yeah, just the car. Ah, However, gotcha. the the aux cord, the aux port in my parents' car is pretty much dead. It cannot detect when things are plugged in and not, and it loses a connection. And then this past weekend, the entire radio unit stopped working. So you turn on the car and you hear a little pop in the speakers. And you you know you could hit aux, you could go to the radio, turn the volume, change channels. However, nothing would play out of the speakers no matter what. So um, I ordered a new oh, aftermarket no. radio online and it will should arrive tomorrow so i'll replace it when i get home from boston so hopefully we'll have a new radio in the car and i made sure to buy one that had bluetooth so mm. i should be okay in the future so it's one of those custom aftermarket unit kind yeah of it's a jbl jbl mm-hmm. i will oh I will. Right on. J, no jvc jvc yeah. it's all blue the interface looks horrid yeah and my I, mom uh, has that and i i can i don't know why no third party audio just I'll buy one that's twenty percent more expensive. Yep. Just give me a decent interface, nope. fewest buttons and options. So the, my mom hates that thing because it doesn't display the time when you're not interacting with it. It'll display your radio station, for example, oh. or it'll display Bluetooth. Yeah, but not the time. So and it drives her crazy. The existing radio in the car did not have a time on it, so there's well, a separate time LCD display further down and harder to see. It would you know it'd be convenient if mm-hmm. it was on the radio, but. So we'll see. Uh, I think the usability of it will be difficult. But it has Bluetooth, so I'm excited, and I hope that will be okay. It also does have an aux cord, so someone like my mom, who still has an iPhone 6, can probably use it. And nice. she'll probably prefer a cord than Bluetooth, unless I'm t- really sure how to set it up. 
So let's go to like kind of the design and feel of it. So I yeah. I bought the the matte black iPhone seven one twenty eight gigabyte, and I also ordered it with a product red leather case. I think these gotcha. leather cases are cheaper than when the iPhone sixes came out. I feel like they were sixty dollars when the iPhone six came out, and now they're forty five. Could be wrong. Maybe they're fifty or fifty five, but I think they're a little cheaper. Yeah. Only five more than the silicone. So I, I thought that was fine. The case has aluminum buttons now instead of leather, which makes them feel significantly more clicky because the you know it's the pressure is directly passed through to the phone, so you feel the response. So I'm a huge fan of that. I was very annoyed with how mushy the the buttons were on my iPhone six with the leather case on. Right. Yeah, I actually ended up getting the uh, black silicone case for my jet black iPhone, uh, which is I guess kind of a little bit hilarious because um, the the signature feature of the jet black iPhone is that kind of uh, the whole thing is kind of the same uh, really neat uh, kind of glass all the way around, uh, yet I cover it up with a phone case uh, on the other side. Nonetheless, uh, I'm actually really kind of happy with that uh, black silicone case, uh, even though I know that it's um, it, it looks a little bit plain, um, but in the situation where I, where I uh, can go without the case. Um, that's usually, uh, you know, it's 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 usually pretty pretty darn all right. Uh, and I can the rest of the time when I'm like in transit and stuff, the silicone cases kind of serve me pretty well. Even though at times I wish I would have splurged, as as you mentioned, Brian, the extra five dollars for the leather case because that product red case I actually had a product red case for my five, uh, for my five S, I should say, and that one lasted me a good long while, uh, and it looked pretty darn neat. Uh, so I'm glad that you uh, that you're a fan of, of that one over there, and you ended up going with that one. Um, but the black silicone one, I know, uh, seems to be doing pretty well. Granted, it's only been it's literally only been one week of use, so uh, perhaps the only time will tell there. Do you do you keep your phone in your pocket most of the time? Uh, sometimes I also I also keep it in the pocket of uh, so I've got a I've got a backpack uh, a rain a waterproof backpack mm-hmm. that um, has has kind of like a. It's kind of tricky to describe, but it's it's essentially like a phone pocket in the uh, in the upper portion of of the uh, backpack itself. There, so I tend to uh, I either put it in my pocket or put the phone in one of those kind of uh, designated phone pockets there in the backpack, which is uh, kind of helpful because um, the phone the phone itself is kind of big, and uh, well, I definitely don't have the same sort of uh, issues that a lot of uh, uh, a lot of other folks, uh, especially especially women, due to like uh, embodied sexism in uh, the way that clothes are designed, have in storing their phones in their pockets. I also have some kind of small pockets in some of my clothes, um, so it's, sometimes it's nicer to just put it uh, in the bag at that point. So I don't end up with I think some of the same wear on the case that I had back when I mostly kept my phone uh, like in jeans pockets. Um, yeah, because I know I know that is one trick with both the leather and the silicone cases is that uh, when it's in the pocket, um, it can sometimes wear a little bit differently than when it's stored elsewhere. Yeah, my my iPhone six, I had the product red silicone case, and I I got that I got one with my iPhone six, and then I also I went back to the Apple Store and got it replaced after a month or after two months because it was starting to wear at the corners, mm-hmm. and they somehow replaced it for me for free. So then I had a new one from about. End of December, beginning of January, through uh, I guess around September, because I bought the leather, I bought the iPhone six S leather case that that edition, the um, what was it, the saddle brown version from iPhone six, because my my oh. silicone one was so worn it would just kind of sweat. You know, if I set it down overnight in the morning, I could like run my finger down it and see a little streak of, of grease in it from where my finger was. So oh, it, wow, it, it really it really wore. I you know I kept it in jeans. For that entire nine month period, so you know, taking in and out a lot in the day, and just a lot of friction in there is um, biking or walking and whatever. So, I found that the silicone case looked nice and it was you know five dollars cheaper, but I think the leather ultimately is more durable for me. So I like that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I guess uh, it, we'll check back in six months. We'll see if I've uh, <laughs> I've, I've swapped to the other side. I've converted back to uh, leather cases. In that sense, this is actually the first one, uh, the first silicone iPhone case. Certainly the first uh, first party case uh, of this sort that I've had. The other other one, the Product Red iPhone 5s case I had was also first party, uh, but that one of course was a leather case, and I was more than happy with that one. 
Uh, so yeah, time will tell. It also, uh, another thing that's worth mentioning is that the 7, uh, the iPhone 7 silicone case does not have the same kind of uh, button reinforcements that the leather case has. Those, mm-hmm. I do believe, seem to be unique to the 7. Does that sound about right with what you're thinking too, Yep, uh, it's, Brian? you know, on the, the leather case, it's machined aluminum. The red is a little darker in color than the, the leather itself. But yeah. I think that I, at first I wasn't a big fan, but I've grown accustomed to that and it's that's okay with me. Totally worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So a, a quick, you know, note on the differences between this and the iPhone 6 and 6S. So the, the camera the camera is a larger f- physical footprint on the back of the phone. Uh, it It is you know, wider and taller. And the aluminum on the back of the case kind of rises up to the edge of the the camera bump versus on the other models. It was just a hole where the there's a, a ring of steel or something. So there, there's still sapphire over the lens cover, but it's larger and it's physically shifted down a little bit lower. On my post, I have a uh, two two images comparing my iPhone six with my with my iPhone seven case and my iPhone seven in my iPhone six case, and you can clearly see that it just does not fit whatsoever. Yeah, that was definitely one of the most striking images uh, in your uh, in your post there. The just the the way that it kind of pretty pretty darn clearly does not fit, even though the form factor uh, kind of looks the same. Yeah, you're right? like, oh, same spot, sweet, but no, it's it's really not quite really. different. Yeah. I mean, in the small scale. So, it, you know, the iPhone 6 leather case has a little plastic ring around the camera where the iPhone 7, it, it doesn't. It kind of seamlessly rolls in. And so yeah. it put a little stress on that, on that case. So I was quick to put it in, take a photo, and then pull it out. But um, Otherwise, the you know, there's no home button at the bottom. There's another speaker grill on the left-hand side of the lightning connector that doesn't actually have a speaker there. I think the microphone is underneath there and the um, barometer. Uh, the bar- baromic yeah was that how you say it sensor for detecting pressure differences for you know stair climbing and things like that yeah it's, essentially it's the, the yeah the electronic barometer right yeah yep yeah, that and um the, the on the top of the phone there's the, the speaker grill is a little bit wider where you put it on your ear because there's a second speaker for um when you're playing audio it plays out at the bottom as well as the front for a stereo speaker it's not quite stereo because one is down or one is out yeah but it really does fill the space a little more and i think it's louder i was doing some testing when i first got this playing some bassy music pretty loud and testing at different volumes and it i you know like a three-quarter volume like pretty close to my ear i could really hear most of the bass that was coming out of the song and i mean the the phone vibrated with it to to play that louder sound but i it was quite impressive yeah i absolutely agree i've actually uh usually end up leaving I used to have a Bluetooth speaker that I'd kind of carry around with my 5S in case I wanted to play it like when I was uh, out working remotely or something. Yeah. Um, uh, but the uh, the 7 has kind of supplanted that in a lot of ways because it really fills the, the, the sound, feel, fills the room, and it seems to be a little bit more kind of true to the recording than certainly than the 5S. Uh, it's really remarkable. That's the same sort of uh, deal that I noticed with the iPad uh, Air 2. Um, that speaker also was, that was kind of the first time that, uh, at least that I noticed that Apple, uh, A, mentioned the quality of the speaker in the keynote and B, uh, that they kind of called out that, Im- that improvement as almost like a spec improvement, right? Um, but even since then, the iPad Pro line, the 6S and the 7, uh, have all represented pretty major improvements. The result kind of being that, um, you know, if you, if you kind of hold on to the phone while it's doing it, the phone will kind of vibrate along with the music because of the way that it's like, um, uh, well, because of the nature of sound, right? That's, yeah. that's how sound works. But I mean, works. you know, if, if anyone is used to a Bluetooth speaker, they will also notice that vibrating like crazy as well. So it, exactly. it just comes with, with greater with greater sound. You need to have more vibrations for that, that sound to be emitted. So just exactly physics. Physics. What is that? But it's, it's pretty darn awesome. The results are pretty darn awesome, as you said. Yeah. So, um, the other any other notable features here? I guess there's the improved battery life, um, the improvements of the A10 Fusion chip added, yeah. the uh, increase of another hour of battery life off of the 6s and 6s plus. Though the 7 plus doesn't have as much of an improvement. I think it's larger display and you know it just it's battery. The the 7 battery was is a little larger in terms of milliamp hour. The 7 Plus, I think, is more or less the same. So that might be a little bit why. 
Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. But that battery life is really uh, a, a, pr a pretty a pretty helpful feature. I feel uh, certainly coming from a uh, almost three year old phone, perhaps more than three year old phone. Um, you know, I've, I've been able to go um, a full day. You know, essentially even now, I think. Um, yeah, sure enough. Just switched to low battery mode just a minute ago, and I've had it Bluetooth, so paired with my with my phone, uh, all and Wi-Fi and cellular all on, on all day long, uh, full blast of brightness. Oftentimes playing music or a podcast. It's pretty uh, pretty remarkable that nonetheless it lasted from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. here. That's pretty pretty reasonable. Yeah, I would definitely say it's much better. And compared to my iPhone 6, where it dies at you know 40 percent when opening Snapchat or doing anything, it really I would never see that thing below 20%. It would be very rare unless it was charging up because, you know, I'd plug it in at 40% and it would say, oh, it's actually at 5%. Oh, my goodness. Or yeah, occasionally but... now, more recently, just this week, I had it charged at full and then I'd, you know, use it for a minute or two loading up Fog of World, which you've heard me talk about a whole lot. And then look and it says 1%. That, oh, my goodness. But then it stays at 1% for hours and hours and hours. So, it, it, you know, it probably just drops low enough at some point. It says, oh, it's getting low. And then it doesn't pull it again. I don't know what it's doing. It's in dire oh. shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the post you linked to from your from your blog there is just like, uh, you know, it's it's pretty it's pretty stark. Uh, you, you use that same phrase, dire shape, in the post and the the Twitter, uh, the the Twitter uh, the the tweet you linked to, uh, along with the screenshot inside of it. It's it's pretty darn stark that that um, the battery capacity, the reported capacity of your six. Your iPhone 6 was 31%. Though 31%. I'll say that, uh, yeah. you know, at sometimes it would say 31%. Other times it would say, you know, 65%, 70%. So it, it jumps around a lot, and I'm not really sure why it does that. Um, this this app no longer works in iOS 10. It's using um, private APIs for using IOKit to get more battery data that slipped through the App Store. Ah, uh, yeah. I think Apple blocked that in the API level or the OS level in iOS mm -hmm. 10. So I'm unable to check it with my current device or devices on iOS 10, but maybe someday. Right. Maybe someday indeed. Well, I think otherwise that just about does it for uh, this second opinion episode uh, related to the iPhone 7. Uh, I don't know. Is there anything else you guys want to get in before we, uh, we call this a show? Uh, if you drop your phones in a puddle, you're okay. That's true. <laughs> it is. Indeed. Um, Splash water and dust resistant. Joining the iPhone or the Samsung Galaxy S7. And, and a and few S, various others. And S5. Yeah, a couple others, right? Yeah. There's been phones for years that have been waterproof, but your mileage varies from phone to phone. Yeah. This and is I think, true. you know, for a, a rating like this, it's rated for one meter at 30 minutes, similar to the the original Apple Watch. Not, the, not Series 1, the original one. Yes, right. And I've heard that referred to as Series Zero, and I kind of, I kind of appreciate that. Just, like, okay, Series Zero. Well, probably actually Series One, because I don't think Series Two is supported for the the swimming stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. That's um, but right. it, you know, it, it lasts longer. I saw a video of someone on some website throwing a, a bucket with a Galaxy S7 and an iPhone 7 in, into a river for five minutes, increasing every five <laughs> feet, and uh, they both made it till about 30, 35 feet. And they both died more or less. The iPhone booted up, but then did die five minutes mm -hmm. later after they're done filming. Or the iPhone or the Galaxy S7 just did not boot up. So yeah. So um, I, my follow up question is, how did you feel about the pricing? Everything seem okay there? At seven hundred fifty for the one twenty gig, which is what I got, plus the case after tax eight sixty. That's the pretty much exact amount I paid for my iPhone six. And my iPhone five and my well, I negotiated a different deal with with my mom and how the cell phone was going to be paid for. But it's the same price point previously. Um, I don't know. I'm unemployed and I paid for this thing uh, unlocked full price on launch day. So I I don't know. I think it's worth it for. I know your pain. For <laughs> yes, coming from from phone number three this year. This the new one will be three. Yeah. Yeah. So I I think it's worth it for every two years. I'd like to, you know, I think it's the best phone that I I can get right now, and that's that's worth it to me. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would uh, more or less agree. One thing I will say is uh, cell phone carriers are uh, literal trash. <laughs> um, uh, please hire me. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, but they're 
literally the, the purchasing experience I had with, with uh, buying from my carrier was um, it was not the best. Uh, the activation as well was 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 pretty awful. But essentially, um, the the carrier prevented me from purchasing directly from Apple. Of course. Um, which which is uh, if uh, for those of you who know which carrier I use, uh, you'll know you'll uh, know. But that's uh, shall we say uh, par for the course. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't know what carrier I use, uh, let me just say that uh, uh, ma- making you feel in the red uh, is is often commonplace. Wink. Um, yes, that was a uh, big red slash Verizon joke. Uh, what Verizon? I mentioned nothing. Uh, the the price point itself uh, that Apple set, I'm pretty alright with. Um, but the purchasing process, I feel, has been kind of uh, made a little bit less. Uh, smooth of late, uh, mostly by the carriers. So, like when activating the phone, for example, I had to actually call from another phone, uh, which of course, because I only have that one cell phone line, um, I'm I'm a full member of the second decade of the 21st century, and I don't have a landline. Um, so as a result, um, I ended up calling from the phone that they deactivated to activate my new phone. Uh, Great. <laughs> Which uh, leads to some weird kind of uh, rips in the fabric of the un- of the space-time continuum. Uh, but it How all are you still out. alive? Uh, I'm not, but uh, <laughs> you know, the, the short answer is I'm not. But no, it's all it's all good. And ultimately, this is all um, kind of fun and games, anyhow. Because um, while it's it's definitely nice to have a seven, uh, I, you know, it's not it's certainly not a necessity, and it all worked out. Yeah, my, my activation process is pretty smooth. I I press the activate now button on my seven, and I watch my six drop down from whatever many bars. Kind of drop down from like four, three, two, one, zero bars. Oh. Still said AT and T. Then it jumped to no service, and then my seven kind of popped up saying AT and T, and the bars bars grew in. So it's kind of a nice process to see. No, that's so that's that's really poignant and kind of a little bit sad, but mostly just poignant. Yeah, it's a little sad. <laughs> But yeah. you know, if I ever travel, maybe I'll use my old my old phone as the the international phone. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. To buy yes, a cheap indeed. vending machine, SIM cards, or whatever. Only not in America. Yes. Yep. yes well, indeed. where where can we find you in the internet if we have more questions? If if listeners have more questions about our new iPhones. Well, uh, if you want to reach me to send me uh, questions and or virtual tomatoes, uh, you can reach me on the Twitter sphere at Brandon underscore MN, uh, where my uh, current festive uh, Twitter name is Brained dash on and then a pumpkin emoji uh, <laughs> because I had to go for something vaguely spooky to celebrate the season. Uh, how about you, Ryan? Where can we find you? Well, if you want to know more about my iPhone 7, I mean, um, no, not really, you can find me on Twitter at Ryanmar and, of course, on my website, which is ryanramperset.com. And you can find me on Twitter at underscore Brian Mitchell underscore and my website, brianm.me, where you can find this post about the iPhone 7 and some photos that I took using Ian Arbuck's great DSLR camera. I realize now looking at on this screen, some of them I edited to be a little too overexposed. You know, the colors were a little... Not super duper accurate. You can see some gradients in them. Fine. I don't know. They, yeah, they look pretty. They look pretty great to me. But, I think um, I I could have been. I think you might just be seeing the dirt on that screen. <laughs> I also could have improved the lighting. I was I was like laying on the floor, holding this thing up against a a, a wedge that he had for holding up phones, and was slowly sliding every time I was he taking just, it. He just has a wedge made for holding phones. Yeah. Wow. And I him. was, and a couple are just off of focus than I would like because I. Because it wouldn't autofocus so close, so I just had the, the focus for as close as it could be, and I'd move the camera till it wasn't focused. Hmm. Aww. So that's that's my strategy. But I think um, a light and a better stand would be nice, and a tripod really. Mm-hmm. So maybe next time, yep, it'll be better. Sounds good. So you can check out these show notes at nexus.tv/so11. Great. Cool, cool. See you next time. Have a good one.